Okay, so uh, obviously this is the last day after discussion of the 2023-24 NHL season. The Stanley Cup playoffs are over. The Florida Panthers well-deserved Stanley Cup win last night over the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, if you can tell, probably didn't sleep a whole lot last night. Um, a lot of different thoughts and emotions trying to keep things just in order for this video. Now, my day after discussions, I will have everything time stamped. So if there's any specific topic that you want to jump to, I will make sure it's time stamped for you. Easy to navigate the video. You can go back and forth, pause when you need to, that sort of thing. Uh, I'll try not to dwell too much on the result last night. There is a lot to talk about, uh, but I'm going to be trying to focus on some of the positive aspects. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, you know, maybe what went wrong, what went right, that sort of thing. And then I'll also talk about the future of the channel, because, of course, there's going to be a lot of people tuning in. There's always uncertainty about, you know, a content creator that covers a team like the Edmonton Oilers, like me, where now that the season's over, what to expect. Don't worry, there's a lot of content coming. I'm very excited for a lot of different announcements here. And um, of course, if you end up liking today's video, make sure you hit like. If you really like it by the end of the video, make sure you hit subscribe. Like I mentioned, uh, the channel's just getting started. I started making content in November, seven months ago. Never could have imagined where we would be today. Um, never could have imagined the run that the Oilers ended up going on. Of course, uh, it's going to take a while to kind of, you know, get over this loss. And I put get over in quotation marks because I don't think you ever get over a Stanley Cup final loss. Every single one that you witness stings. Um, obviously I'm lucky enough to have been able to witness the Bruins win a cup in 2011. I'm, you know, Bruins are my second favorite team, but watching them lose in 2013, watching them lose in 2019, watching the Oilers lose in 2006. And now in 2024, I've watched my teams lose a lot more than they've won. I've never seen the Oilers win a Stanley cup in my lifetime, but unlike 2006, I truly feel like the Edmonton Oilers are going to be back. You know, Oh six, I was 12 years old. Didn't have a full grasp of, you know, what the future of that team could have looked like watch the game through a completely different lens as a kid. And then just a few days after that Stanley Cup final game, 7-06, and you had Chris Pronger request the trade. Unless something absolutely bananas happens, I can't see any of the Oilers franchise cornerstone players right now demand a trade so soon after a Cup final loss. The core is set. Dreisaitl, he's going to resign. McDavid's going to, like, trust me, these guys are staying. They're not leaving. Dreisaitl's not going to get traded. I don't want to even entertain that discussion right now uh but there will be a lot of decisions to make for the new general manager there's a lot happening in the next week in the nhl you have the nhl draft in three days you have free agency in a week from now um it's it's actually pretty wild just how much is going to be condensed in the next you know five to, to seven eight days in the nhl obviously ken holland's contract is up who's going to be making the decisions for the oilers and you know for the draft free agency and beyond and then of course the trades that could happen this summer the the Oilers roster is going to look much much different I'm not going to do a full breakdown of their the future of the roster in this video this is just going to be kind of focused on uh last night's game I'm going to try and keep this like a usual day after discussion but there will be a video coming out in the next couple days here regarding what players are likely leaving for Edmonton, what players are likely coming back, uh, free agent targets. I'll have a free agent target video. Uh, but before, you know, we get into all that, uh, let's just kind of get into today's discussion. So of course, game seven recap here, Florida wins the Stanley cup four games to three. They had that three, nothing series lead. They almost blew it, but they did not blow it. Uh, you know, history will remember them as the winners. They will remember the Edmonton Oilers coming up close, but not quite making it. And uh, would have been a crazy Cinderella type storybook ending. Not our time this year. The Florida Panthers, like I said, Panthers fans, you deserve it. I'm giving all the firm handshakes through the webcam here. Uh, nothing but class. Your fans have treated me so, so well. And uh, I'm really excited to hopefully interact with a lot of you moving forward. Now, the final score last night was 2-1. And at the bottom of the screen, of course, I always have some of the advanced metrics from last night's game. So expected goals for in all situation for Edmonton, 55.60%. Corsi 4, 51.30%. High danger Corsi 4, 56.30%. And scoring chances for 51.30%. The Oilers had a slight edge in every category here. It was such a tight, well-played game by both teams. You know, the Oilers, I think they got off a, a little... They got off a little slow. They looked a little tentative. They didn't really find their game until the third period. And at that point, it is too late to try and get into a game. They had some looks. Bobrovsky made some saves. What can you do? 
for topics today in this video on the right side of the screen. Uh, this one stings. Of course, I already mentioned how much it stings at the beginning of the video. I'll talk a little bit about, about it more just as an Oilers fan, the emotions that we're probably all feeling. And then I want to discuss the Con Smythe just briefly. There's been a lot of discourse around the Con Smythe uh, voting and, uh, you know, McDavid, should he have grabbed the trophy, that sort of thing. It was McDavid deserving. In my opinion, of course he was. Uh, was this season a success? I'll discuss, you know, when we look back on where the team was, how the team performed, how close they got. Is this season considered a success? Um, I, I mentioned it a little bit in the intro as well. Tough decisions. There's a lot of tough decisions coming up for the Oilers organization, not just when it comes to which players they might resign, but, you know, the Who's going to be in charge of that? Who are they going to target as a general manager? Uh, who's going to be making the decisions in the interim? It'll be interesting to see over the next couple of weeks here. Uh, and then, of course, towards the end of the video, I'll talk about the future of this YouTube channel. There is so much to come. I cannot wait. Like I said, we are just getting started on YouTube here. It's only been seven months. We're almost at 3,500 subscribers. This is one of the most exciting opportunities of a lifetime that you have all helped me have and I'm excited to continue to build on that. We're going to build a ton of momentum. We're going to build a lot of excitement and uh the theme for next season is going to be retribution. Just like it was for Florida this year, next season for Edmonton it's going to be hashtag #retribution. Edmonton's going to find a way to get back here. I know it. I feel it. Um there's a lot of optimism. Obviously, there's a lot of negativity to feel today and, you know, still processing emotions. That's super valid. So let's just get with, you know, start with the first topic. This one stings. It stings a lot. It stings a lot. I didn't sleep a whole lot last night. I was reflecting on a lot of different moments from the game, a lot of what ifs, and it was just eating me up. Um, you know, last night, during the live stream, during my little post-game recap, during the live stream, I held things together. Very positive, very happy. When I clicked start or stop streaming, when I clicked stop streaming, stop recording, I let out the biggest F-bomb out of frustration. And I screamed. You'll never see, you'll never see that footage because I didn't record it. But I just want all of you to know that I was incredibly frustrated um, for many reasons. When you get this close, when you get that close, one puck bounce, just one puck bounce, a little bit of puck luck, so close. Uh, so, you know, obviously I ended up having a, a, a good night. I cuddled with my cats, hung out with my girlfriend, um, relaxed, had some food, you know, had some water, self-care, super important. If you were drinking last night, of course, today, make sure that you are drinking lots of water, hydrate, Gatorade, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it stings. And there's, you know, in 2006, as a 12-year-old, I was like, you know what? Empton's going to be back. But like I said, watch, you know, viewing the game as a 12-year-old, it's a lot different than viewing the game the way I do now, the way I analyze the game, the education I've had, the things I've learned, the people I've talked to in, you know, in hockey. Uh, my own life experiences as an adult, there's never a guarantee that they get back. When you're 12 years old, you have this like type of optimism that I wish I could go back and like hold on to. It took 18 years for the Oilers to make it back to the Stanley Cup final. And, uh, you know, a lot of people made fun of me for crying when they beat Dallas in game six to make it to the cup final because I, dude, I was an absolute emotional wreck. But you don't realize how hard it is to get to the Stanley Cup final until you make it and for the Edmonton Oilers it was 18 years there were so many highs and lows from 2006 mostly lows of course we all know the decade of darkness but that hope that hit in 2015 when they got Connor McDavid that hope in 2017 despite that heartbreaking loss in game seven of the Anaheim Ducks uh there was a lot of hope and optimism and even even back in 2017 in my brain I just believed I was like you know what the Oilers lost in round two that's okay all the greats it you know they lose a few before they end up winning the thing um and then obviously we all know what happened how Peter Torelli kind of messed up the roster really bad trades um, you know, Trelli, the only thing, the only saving grace for Trelli was his drafting for Ken Holland. I think the only saving grace for him has been his ability to acquire players through free agency. And he's made some good trades. Obviously he's made some bad trades, but nothing on the level that Trelli did. Uh, Holland's biggest weakness here was his drafting, uh, in Edmonton. And I'll have a, I'll ha I'll have a video about Ken Holland, whether he did enough for this team. Like that's going to be a, that could be an entire video on its own. Did Ken Holland do enough? Uh, at the end of the day, the pieces were here, but there's still deficiencies in this roster. 
And knowing where the team needs to improve gives me hope because if they get the right general manager higher, they're going to be able to figure out what the major holes are on this team, how to fill those holes, how to maximize the salary cap increasing going into next season, how to maximize value with the contracts that they currently have, how to maximize Big David and Dry Settle's time in Edmonton. Of course, Dry Settle, as of right now, he has one year left on his deal before he's due for an extension. I truly, truly believe he'll sign that extension this summer. Uh, I don't think he's going anywhere. McDavid and Dry Settle and Nugent Hopkins, <clears throat> my apologies. They've all had that taste of the Stanley Cup final now. They've all had that taste. They are going to stay. Just like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he signed that long-term deal a couple of years ago to stay in Edmonton. Pretty sweetheart of a deal as well. Uh, Dry Settle's going to do the same thing. McDavid's going to do the same thing. These two players are here to get the job done in Edmonton. I know they are. They are not going anywhere. Of course, there's always that chance that for some reason, one or both don't come back. I just can't see it happening. If Edmonton never made it to this point, you know, made it to a cup final with their tenure until, you know, with, during their contracts, I could see them leaving. They have been perennial contenders for the last couple seasons here. Uh, this year, Cup Final loss, Game 7. Last year, Round 2, they lost to the Cup winner in the Vegas Golden Knights. The year before that, Conference Finals lost to Colorado, who won the Stanley Cup. The Oilers have lost to the Cup finalists, or the Cup winners, three years in a row. This team's right there. They're right there, and knowing the holes and deficiencies on this team, knowing that they got that close, even with you know these major areas of concern on the roster, we're talking about the defensive core, we're talking about scoring depth on the wings, uh, we're talking about you know, in, you know, know goaltending. Inconsistent goaltending. And of course, last night was not on Stuart Skinner. Yes, you would have liked to save. You would have liked to save on Reinhardt, the 2-1 goal. But you're not going to win a hockey game with by scoring only one. And, you know, Bobrovsky, he made the bigger saves. I think Stuart Skinner played admirably. And, you know, we always... Oilers fans have been asking. We just want a goaltender with a 900 save percentage, 2.5 goals against average. Give the team a chance to win exactly what Skinner gave us last night. The offense wasn't able to break through. It stings a lot. Obviously, Yanmark. Loved Yanmark. Uh, I want Yanmark back. I want Connor Brown back. Uh, I would love Henrique back if he took a, an absolute sweetheart of a deal to come back, knowing that where he's at in his, you know, his age curve. Uh, I think that is a terrific, terrific third line. Maybe one of the best third lines if Connor Brown is able to build off of his play in the playoffs, if Yanmark's able to build off of his play. I won't be surprised if all three leave. I could see Connor Brown coming back. Uh, I think the fans really rallied around him, even when he wasn't scoring, and there was a lot of discourse around his play during the season. Um, I'm I'm excited for the future of this team, and you know I'm just trying to be as level-headed as possible with my emotions. I know you're probably all feeling pretty rough this morning, or whenever you're watching this video, afternoon, evening, could be a, a week from now that you end up seeing this. But the team's gonna be back. The team will be back. I know they're going to be back. It's okay to mourn the loss, and it's okay if you never get over this. Your feelings are valid. I promise you that. Your feelings are valid. Now, uh, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is the Con Smythe dis discussion. Now, out of the 16 writers that voted on the Con Smythe, 15 gave McDavid the first place vote. It was a near unanimous decision. There was one writer, I think, for ESPN that gave his first place vote to Bobrovsky. I'd have to double check, though. And a lot of discourse around that. You know, does a player on the losing team deserve it? When you're breaking Wayne Gretzky records in the postseason, or Wayne Gretzky records in general, yeah, you deserve it. In my personal opinion, uh, Connor McDavid, he went on a historical run production-wise in the playoffs, came up a little bit short, didn't produce points in game six or seven. The depth was there in game six. They weren't able to find a way in game seven, and it's not for a lack of play from Connor McDavid. In game six, he had a 56% expected goals, four percentage when he was on the ice. In game seven, that climbed to a 90% expected goals, four percentage when he was on the ice. A little bit of puck luck. It happens. Connor McDavid played more than good enough to produce in game six and seven. The puck just didn't go in. They couldn't find the looks they were you know, trying to get. Power play went cold. They only had one one opportunity. But they had to play with a broken stick. They cycled around a lot, but they didn't 
They didn't get the look. And when they tried, Dreisaitl's shot was way off. I will not be surprised to, you know, find out if there's some major, major injuries for a lot of different Oilers. Of course, injuries are not an excuse. Look at what a lot of teams go through with injuries. You end up finding out, even on the winning team. I know Florida, they're going to have their run of injuries too. Guys play through a lot of different things. Um, but for the Conn Smythe Trophy, Connor McDavid deserved it. He deserved it. It was a historical run for him. It was a historical run for any player in the NHL playoffs. Uh, modern era records being set by Connor McDavid, breaking Wayne Gretzky's assist record. Yes, it's in more games. It doesn't nullify the accomplishment. I think what McDavid did was truly something special. And there's a lot of fans that think that was pretty, you know, oh, I can't believe he didn't come out and accept the trophy. Super unclassy, not a true leader. Come on. Enough with the nonsense. It's okay to dislike the Oilers. It's okay to dislike Connor McDavid, but you cannot attack someone's character because they didn't come out and accept an award that isn't as important as the Stanley Cup. At the end of the day, the Stanley Cup is the trophy that matters most to players. The Conn Smythe, that will be on Connor McDavid's record. That helps him get into the Hockey Hall of Fame no matter what he does for the rest of his career. Uh, it's a trophy that obviously he should be proud of, that the Fans should be happy that he won. Um, for Panther fans, of course, I think Panthers fans, there was a good argument for Barkov winning it. There was an argument for Bobrovsky before game four, five, and six. Uh, Bobrovsky just gave up a few too many goals. That save percentage came way, way down in the cup final, and it would have been tough to give him that trophy um, just based on those games. But, you know, Connor McDavid, the, the Conn Smythe goes to the most valuable player throughout the entire postseason. Connor McDavid, right from game one against the LA Kings, he truly was the most valuable player in the entire playoffs, truly deserved to win that trophy. Uh, but don't go after McDavid's character because he didn't come out on the ice to accept it. We've all seen that photo of J.S. Jaguar with the Anaheim Ducks in 2003, the pain in his face, that thousand yard stare. I don't know why you want to see that. What's the point? What's the point in in making a player that just lost the the biggest moment of his life, the trophy that they worked their entire life for? What's the point in a in a player that just lost that opportunity and is watching the other team celebrate? What's the point of making them come back out onto the ice to take a picture in front of a trophy that you know they're they're going to ha you know you know McDavid is happy with the accomplishment, but he's not happy with the result. You know, uh, on an individual level, he's gonna be proud of what he did, but he's going to feel like he let the team down in game six and seven, especially game seven. And there's no reason to put a player through that, in my opinion. If he doesn't want to come out and accept the award, that's up to the player. And I would have said the same thing if the Oilers had won the cup and someone on Florida won the con smite and they didn't come out. Like, like why? Like, why, why are we forcing this narrative that players should accept the award and have a smile on their face? And no, just... McDavid deserves to just take his time. He's in the locker room, not coming back out to accept that thing. It's a great achievement for Connor McDavid. It's a great achievement for his, you know, something in his career. Uh, but I think it also it will be motivating for next season. I think he's going to look at that Conn Smythe and he's gonna he's gonna want the Stanley Cup next to it in his in his trophy cabinet. So it'll be a motivating factor for McDavid. It'll be a motivating factor for the Oilers. Uh, and, and you know, a lot of fans were also upset. The Panthers fans were booing during the Conn Smythe announcement from Panthers fans. Listen, the games in Florida, they wanted one of their players to win the trophy. I'm not mad that Florida fans booed. Like, come on, like, guys, I get it. We're emotional. There's a lot of emotions in general with this stuff. Uh, Connor McDavid winning the trophy was highly, highly deserved. Uh, could you have made an argument for Barkov? Of course you could have, but at the end of the day, when you look at the performance of McDavid from game one of the playoffs to game seven of the Stanley cup finals, it's pretty hard to give it to anyone else that's reflected in the voters. Uh, I will say quick shout out to Jim Matheson, who his entire ballot, all three players that he voted the Conn Smythe for first place vote. He gave to McDavid second place vote. He gave to Zach Hyman and his third place vote. I think he gave to uh, Evan Bouchard. So there was three Oilers on Jim Matheson's ballot. Uh, absolute Homer to the end. Um, I think that's really funny. Personally, of course, a lot of people are ripping on Jim Matheson for that. I respect I respect Jim Matheson for just having all Oilers on his Conn Smythe ballot. Uh, but that at the end of the day, if a player wants to accept it or not, that's up to them. Um, the emotions are high. It's tough in that moment to come out and accept a photo with the commissioner and get a picture in front of that trophy because the one that they want is the Stanley Cup. They want that 35 pound uh, piece of silver and 
we'll see we'll see if they're able to come back uh within the next year or two and find a way to win that um but the con Smythe trophy a lot of discourse around it let's try not to overthink it here of course panthers fans i understand the arguments and there's going to be arguments all summer about whether mcdavid should have won it or not there's going to be arguments whether he should come out to accept the trophy and get that picture with it or not at the end of the day let's not overthink it. It truly doesn't matter. If I'm going to be completely honest, whether he came, came out or not, I, I truly don't think it matters to me. So with that, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is, was this season a success? Now looking at this through a lens of hindsight, the team was two, nine and one. They were 31st in the NHL. They just lost to the San Jose sharks, bottom feeder of the league at that point. And they ended up being a bottom feeder for the rest of the season. That's reflected in the fact they won the first overall pick. They're going to have an opportunity to draft Mac when Celebrini, but for the Edmonton Oilers, they went that loss to the San Jose sharks. That was the moment in my brain where I was like, this season is done. And you know what? A lot of people are going to pull up the receipts. They're going to be like, ah, oh, not a true fan. You gave up on them. How many fans, listen, how many fans realistically truly believe that the team could get to the Stanley Cup final game seven back in November? Uh, I'm going to say maybe 0.5% of fans. And you know what? If you have that type of belief, I am super happy for you. I wish I could believe that much. Um, the way I look at the game, analyze, see how things are going. Uh, now, the analytics show that the team was going to turn things around, whether they hired a new coach or not. Uh, but I was frustrated. The two nine and one start. I was frustrated. That's when I decided to make my first video. Um, and my videos, my early videos on the channel were pretty negative. They they were going after Ken Holland. I had a top ten worst worst moves in the Connor McDavid era, and Holland and Shirelli being hired were was number one on that list. Like I was mad. I was upset. Um, but I was still watching the games. I was still supporting. Still wearing my jersey and hat every day. It wasn't until Chris Knobloch was hired and the team started to win a little bit and they got back to 500. And I think in my brain, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe they can turn this thing around. Maybe they can squeak into the playoffs. Maybe they win around, but they'll build on this. And then they went on that 16 game win streak. And then that's when it's like, holy smokes, maybe this team is actually a cup contender again. Who knows? Uh, then they had a little bit of a, you know, they have the, they had their lulls, but then they'd, they'd come back with big win streaks. And you know, when the playoffs started, obviously a lot of hope. They beat the Kings in five, feeling good. It took seven games to beat the Canucks, but they did it. They were down three games to two. They played two defensive masterclass games in a row to shut that thing down and move on to the conference finals. And then in the Dallas Stars series, they were down 2-1 to Dallas, uh, and then they were down 2 nothing in game four. They found a way to come back uh, and win that series. They won three straight games. Game six, one of the ugliest wins I've ever seen. 10 shots on goal. Lowest shots on goal in a clinching game in NHL history to win. Love to see that, obviously. Uh, but there were signs throughout the postseason. There were signs during the regular season that the team had some cracks. Uh, and the Florida Panthers exposed those cracks early in this series. They got up three games to none. And, you know, when, when the series was 3 nothing. There's still fans that think I said that the Oilers wouldn't win. I said they were unlikely to win because any team that goes up 3-0, only one team in NHL history has ever come back from that in the Stanley Cup Finals. The odds, like the the Betty, like the odds were literally 0.5% for the Oilers to win the series. So I look at things from a number perspective, a realistic perspective. Uh, you know, I I, I don't blindly cheer and blindly believe things. Uh, I I have a sense of realistic expectations here. Um, and I still have fans that come at me be like, you gave up when it was three, nothing Florida, blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't. I didn't give up. What I did was acknowledge that Florida was likely to win the series. It didn't mean that I wanted Emden to lose the series. There's a big difference there. But when we look at this season as a whole, reflecting on everything that happened, the coaching change, the 16 game win streak, uh, you, you know, McDavid hitting 100 assists this year, you know, Guys that, you know, Connor, the Connor Brown situation, the Yanmark situation, guys that I was like, these guys should be healthy scratched. Um, you look at everything that happened right from game one, that 8 1 loss to Vancouver. And then you look at where they got to game seven of the Stanley Cup final. If someone told me back in November, hey, hey, Austin, I'm a time traveler. And guess what? The Oilers, they're going to be in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. And if they prove that they were a time traveler, I still wouldn't believe them. They could have all the proof in the world. But like, There's no way this team was going to make the Stanley Cup final. There's no way that they're going to force a game seven in the Stanley Cup final. So at the end of the day, 
I do think this season was a success. I know the the cup or bust memes, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, they've said this since last year's elimination. It's cup or bust. Said it. You know, you know the Oilers, they had those captain skates in August, uh, you know, before training camp officially opened for Edmonton. Um, and they say the same thing. Cup or bust. There's a lot of pressure that they put on their shoulders, the team on their shoulders. Uh, and, and the fans' expectations, especially with talents with, you know, like McDavid and Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins and Zach Hyman. Speaking of Zach Hyman, I, I didn't mention this in my little reflection of the season. 50-goal season, uh, you know, 70 goals if you if you count playoff totals as well with that. Um, truly unbelievable for Zach Hyman. Uh, obviously, there's always going to be a bit of concern about sustainability for Zach Hyman's production. I think we all know his production is going to dip next year. He's on the wrong side of 30. Not often a player hits 50 goals for the first time ever after the age of 30, 31 years old. So expect him to probably come back down to earth. He'll probably have 30, 35 next year. Uh, in saying that, I do expect Connor McDavid to have a better season next year when it comes to the goal scoring production. Um, it just looked like something was bothering him a lot this season. He, he even missed a couple games back in October with an undisclosed closed injury um and, and dry sidle we can tell things were something was bothering him especially during the postseason he missed a lot of practices he uh he almost didn't finish game one against the canucks in that series so um as a whole though this season i truly think was a success and right now there's a lot of people that are probably like well no it's cup or bust and that's it there's a lot of different levels that you can measure for success, and whatever that level that you measure, it's valid. If you think this season was a failure because they didn't win the Stanley Cup, I get that. If you're looking at this from an even bigger picture and you're going, well, year nine of McDavid, still no cups, that's a failure. That's also a valid feeling. But I do truly believe that this team is going to be back. I think this year as a whole was a success. I think Chris Knobloch, he has learned a lot. He made some really, really ballsy judgment calls, ballsy lineup adjustments throughout the playoffs. He got the most out of a lineup that many of us knew and believed had some major holes, and he was able to maximize a lot of different players' potential and uh, production. That's huge. Mark Stewart runs the penalty kill. The Oilers had a historic penalty kill in the playoffs. A penalty kill that will probably never uh, be matched again type type penalty kill. Uh, their special teams as a whole, obviously the power play got a little bit cold, only scored a couple goals in the cup finals. It's not why they didn't win the cup. They didn't win the cup because Florida was, no, they were the better team. Um, but I this, this was a successful season. And as a fan, I couldn't be more proud of the team. I couldn't be more proud of fans for rallying around this team, rallying around each other. And for the fans on this channel that are always so positive, it's something that I push to everyone all the time. Positivity goes a long way. It's okay to be down today. It's okay to be down in the future. I get that. Um, and it's okay to feel like right now that the season was not a success. It's cup or bust. From that angle, yes, of course, it, it wasn't a success. But just with where this team was, the amount of adversity they faced all year, uh, I I couldn't be more proud of the group. I couldn't be more proud of the players. I couldn't be more proud of Chris Knobloch coming into an unwinnable situation as a new head coach, unfamiliar with the entire organization pretty much other than McDavid, you know, because he coached McDavid in junior. Pretty wild, man. Pretty wild season. We're going to look back on, on the 2023-24 season with a lot of real positive memories in the future. Ten years from now, we're all going to be looking up highlights from this specific season, um, especially the playoff run as well. And it's going to be something that's talked about for a long time. The Stanley Cup Finals are going to be talked about for a long time. And um, it, was a, it was fun. It was a fun year. Sucks right now, but it was a success. I truly do think it was a success. I think fans should hold their heads high. I think the players should hold their heads high. Um, and there's going to be a lot of motivation going into next year. Like I said, the theme for next season will be retribution. Let's 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 get back here. Um, let's let's win it this time, right? So they've had that taste of the Cup Finals. Uh, I think they're going to be on a mission next year. There's going to be a left level that we have not seen yet from different players that I think is is going to shock the hockey world. Now, I could be wrong. Watch the Oilers stumble out of the gate just like they did this year. Like, who knows? Like, they, you can't predict this stuff. You can't predict it, but I'm hoping for the best. I think this was a successful season. I'm very happy with the team, happy with the group, happy with Coach Knobloch. I think Knobloch having a full summer off and then being able to have a full training camp heading into next year is going to go a long way in setting the tone, setting... You know, the line, setting the mood, setting his system in place. I very much look forward to it. Next topic 
tough decisions. There is a lot of tough decisions coming up for this Edmonton Oilers team. Uh, the organization as a whole, we have the draft coming up in a couple days, then free agency. The team doesn't have a whole lot of cap space and they have a lot of pending UFAs. Um, you know, trying to figure out who's going to come back, trying to figure out who they're going to target as a free agent, trying to figure out trades to make to free up cap space. Of course, a lot of fans, including myself, probably looking at moving Cody CC at this point. See if a team wants that contract. It's, it's it, you know, it's not super tough to move. There's only one year left on it. Uh, and they need a partner for Darnell Nurse. Now, Phil Broberg, I think he played admirably in the Stanley Cup Finals. That is a, a very tough situation to be put in where you're put on that second pair with uh, Darnell Nurse. I think Phil Broberg going into next year, I think it would be best to start him on the third pair, you know, on that left side on the third pair. And then, of course, the Oilers are going to need to find someone to play with Darnell Nurse. Will they re-sign Vinny Dayarnay? I'm not sure. Depends what Vinny Day or Nay wants. Uh, and and again, lots of pending UFAs. There's Connor Brown, Adam Henry, Corey Perry, uh, Matthias Yanmark. I think Dylan Holloway is an RFA, so they're going to have to figure out what his contract's going to look like to keep him around. Again, there, there's, there's a lot of value to be had in a lot of players that are pending free agents here. Uh, and then, of course, the free agent market. There's a lot of different players, big name players like Jake Gensel. And then you have, you know, your secondary scorers like a Jake DeBrusque. Um, obviously, the Oilers won't have the cap space to go after a Jake Gensel. It's just not realistic. I would love it. And they could prove me wrong and sign him. I really don't think they're going to. I think Edmonton will go after a team like Jay, uh, a player like Jake DeBrusque. Uh, of course, I think Tyler Toffoli is a free agent as well coming up. A lot of different names out there. Um and then in terms of trades, you know, obviously you want to find a partner for Nurse, but do you even try and trade a Darnell Nurse? I don't know. Like, again, this is a situation for the next general manager. I don't envy them at all. Uh, the team is in a bit of a cap hell situation. They have a lot of holes that they need to fill. They have a lot of players that are going to be moving on from this team. A lot of players I wish could have got the job done. A lot of players I wish could have, I wish I could have watched hoist it this year. Uh, you know, and man, I'm thinking about Corey Perry right now. I know Corey Perry has a Stanley Cup, so I don't feel as bad. But at his point in his at this stage of his career, he's been in the cup finals four of the last five years, and he's lost all four of those Stanley Cup finals. That is brutal. Just brutal to me. Um we'll see if he comes back. I don't know. Sam Gagne, he's probably done as a player, but I would love to see him as part of the coaching staff. Uh, you know. Sam Gagne just wasn't given a lot of opportunity this year. Um, after, after like November, December, he, he he got into the lineup periodically. I would have liked to see him in the lineup more. I would have liked to see him in the playoffs, but at the end of the day, Sam Gagne being inserted into the lineup would not have been like the needle mover, right? That that would have moved the needle enough to get the job done and win the Stanley Cup. It would have been a feel good story, of course. And uh, you know, I'm biased. Sam Gagne was my favorite player when uh, when he was drafted by Edmonton. So a lot of tough decisions here. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think the team should do? Who do you think they should get rid of? Who do you think they should target in free agency? I want to hear from you. Make sure you let me know all your thoughts in the comments section below. And kind of to just get things close to ending here, uh, the future of the channel. I've already had a lot of people ask, you know, will I still make videos? Will I still create content, live streams? Yes. And for the most part, it's going to be daily content throughout the whole summer. For the most part, obviously, there's going to be some days if I can't get a video up, I'll make sure I let everyone know. But there will be consistent content this summer. I'm going to have more NHL content, right? I'm going to be branching out uh, and covering more teams, players, signings, trades, and breaking news. It's not going to be just strictly Edmonton Oilers content. Um, and, and I'm not going to become hockey guy 2.0. That's not what I'm going to be trying to do. I'm of course going to have my own spin on things, my own style of production. Uh, I, I just, I love hockey so much and the amount of fans that have, you know, found the channel that aren't just Oilers fans. I want to make sure that I'm giving them something worth watching too, and not just always Oilers content. And Hey, I appreciate that. You like the Oilers content. You like the Oilers fan angle. But, you know, for me personally, too, my my brain, I just want to talk about more. I want to be able to talk about more hockey-related things. I want to talk about more players. I want to talk about more teams. I want to talk about more news that happens. I want to give my thoughts on different things and different teams and different players. And, and you know, I, I'm excited to have these ridiculous, terrible takes on another team and having their fans come and attack me relentlessly. It's, it's going to be fun. Of course, that probably won't happen too often. Uh, I'm pretty level-headed. Try and make sure that I'm even keeled and I try and, you know, give, give the flowers to everyone that deserves it. Um, 
But yeah, so there's gonna be more NHL content. I'll be branching out all summer and even into next year. Lots of different NHL content. Uh, and then there's gonna be more long form content. So things like top 10 style videos, uh, more historical analysis type videos, uh, video essays, game breakdowns, season breakdowns, team breakdowns. I'm excited to do that as well. I'm excited to provide more long form content for people. And then, of course, on Euler game days, there will always, always be pregame reports and postgame recaps and live streams. Starting next season, starting in the preseason, I will be doing live stream commentary for every single Oilers game. I'm very much looking forward to it. The live streams this spring and summer, uh, they, they unlocked something. Uh, they unlocked an excitement. They unlocked a, a type of content that I didn't think I would like doing but I ended up truly loving it and you all made that possible. So I'm excited for that next season as well. And then of course, uh, there will be more live streams other than just, you know, the, the live stream commentary during a game this summer. Of course, I'll, I'll, I'm going to live stream during the NHL draft. I'll have my own thoughts on a lot of the different prospects and we'll get to interact, have a chat, have a drink. It'll be fun to, you know, watch the draft with everyone. Uh, and then I'll do a live stream on NHL free agency, free agent frenzy, July 1st. I'm excited for that. That'll be a long day too, because you know, free agent frenzy, it's, it's, it's covered all day on, on July 1st. I'm excited for that. I'll have a live stream during free agent frenzy. And of course, uh, you know, for the, for the people that like the, the video game, the NHL EA sports video game series, uh, I'm planning on doing live streams of GM mode or franchise mode, you know, style commentaries. I'll, I'll take a team and I'll try and turn them into a dynasty you know, the, the whole narrative around EA sports trades and realistic trades. Uh, I'm excited for the challenge of, you know, building a dynasty in NHL 24. I'd love to take a team that, you know, maybe doesn't get a whole lot of love in the, in the scene, in the hockey world and turn them into a dynasty, create storylines and narratives and uh, have a lot of fun with that. So lots of content for the channel. Uh, the future is bright here on Austin hockey. The future is bright in oil country. And um, yeah, I, I'm excited for what the future has in store here. I'm excited to uh, be part of this. I'm excited to continue to provide entertaining content for everyone. And I'm excited for, you know, the, just the future in general. Um, there's, there's a lot to hold your head up high about with this team. Everything that's going on here, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. I have no other words other than uh, it's going to be a blast. I'm excited. Um, I just want to thank everyone once again for tuning in, showing your support. Uh, it truly means the world to me. Would not be here where I am, almost 3,500 subscribers without all of you. And uh, this is just the beginning, right? We're here. The mountain's way up here. Yeah, way off screen. You can't even see where my hand went. It just completely disappeared. We're going up. The Oilers, they're going up. And uh, we'll be here every step of the way. Cannot wait for the future of the channel. As always, if you liked today's video, make sure you hit like. If you really liked it, make sure you subscribe. And um, yeah, watch out for a draft uh, pre pre draft video. I'll have my own like draft rankings. I'll have a video uh, coming up before the draft. Of course, I'll do a live stream on draft day, and um, we'll go from there. I'm excited for the future. Of course, follow my socials for all updates regarding videos, content, live streams, that sort of thing. All my social and links are in the description of my videos. And uh, as always, fight like a kid, fight like Ben, tell someone that you love them. Oil Country, it's been an absolute blast. It's been a privilege. I cannot wait for the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful summer, and uh, I'll be here all summer no matter what. And I hope to see all of you there too. We'll see you soon.